Electricity. Investigating resistance. Let's look at two similar circuits. So we have a circuit on the left called circuit A, and we have one on the right called circuit B. If we were to hypothesize, which circuit would have more resistance overall? The majority of people would say circuit B. But why? Well, we can see that the only difference is that circuit B has a longer wire. So will this longer wire affect the overall resistance of the circuit? So we're going to investigate the effect of the length of wire on the resistance of the circuit. We're going to use this kind of circuit as our test. So we have a cell, our test wire, and some crocodile clips. We're also going to have a ruler here so that we can measure the distance between the crocodile clips. We need an ammeter to measure the current in the circuit and a voltmeter to measure the voltage. Here we have a switch. When it's open like this, it means the circuit is off and there's no current flowing. So the method of the practical is going to be the following. Number one, we're going to set the crocodile clips zero centimeters apart from each other. We're going to have the voltmeter in parallel to the crocodile clips to measure the voltage and the ammeter in series to measure the current. Okay, so once that's ready, we're going to close the switch and turn it on. Then we're going to record the ammeter and voltmeter. Then for this distance, we're going to calculate resistance using the equation V equals IR. So we're going to rearrange that so that R equals V over I. And then we're going to look at the voltmeter and ammeter to get the values. Then turn off the switch and move the clips apart from each other. So for example, we'll move them by two centimeters apart. And then we're going to repeat the whole process. So close the switch, calculate resistance by looking at the ammeter and voltmeter, then open the switch, move the clips apart, close the switch, calculate resistance, open, move apart, close, calculate resistance, open, move apart, and so on, until we get all the way to the end. Then we're going to plot a graph, and the graph is going to have on the x-axis the length of the wire, and on the y-axis we're going to have resistance. Once you have all your values, your line should look something like this. This shows a directly proportional relationship between the length of wire and resistance. So this tells us that as our wire gets longer in a circuit, the resistance will increase. Now sometimes you might see that your data does not cross the origin. And this is a common error. In this error, all the readings have been affected, which is also known as a zero or a systematic error. So why did this happen? This happened most likely because the clips in the beginning were not exactly zero centimeters apart. How do we get reliable results in this experiment? To make sure that our results are reliable, in other words, the only thing affecting resistance is length of wire, we have to keep the following factors constant. Number one, wire thickness. So we have to make sure that our test wire has the same thickness overall and we can measure the thickness by using a caliper. The second thing is temperature. Now throughout the experiment, the wire is going to get hot, so we can leave the switch open between our readings and this will allow the wire to cool down and then we can go for the next reading. Some important things to look out for. There are some hazards involved with this practical. Number one, if we use a very high current, this could potentially melt the wire or even burn our skin. So to overcome this, just use a lower current. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.